Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm going to be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of July. As always, we're gonna visit several deep sky objects, galaxies, nebula. We're gonna bring it closer to home. And we're gonna see what the moon and the planets are up to this month as well. So as always, buckle in and let's see what's really out there. Tonight we're going to start with our nearest neighbors. Mercury will be a relatively easy target for the first half of the month and appears low over the western horizon from about 15 minutes after sunset. Unfortunately, there's no moon nearby to help you locate it. Mars continues to grow dimly for a few hours after sunset and crosses into Virgo on the 28th where it's joined by a beautiful crescent moon that evening. Saturn and Neptune are observable for a few hours just before the pre-dawn twilight, with the last quarter moon appearing above Saturn on the 16th. Now there is something quite special happening with Saturn and Neptune this month. We'll get into that in a bit more detail here in a moment. As far as Uranus goes, it's edging into the morning sky and Venus is appearing within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view for the first nine days of the month. The pair will be closest on the 4th, but spotting Uranus will mean rising about 90 minutes before dawn while the sky is still relatively dark. Jupiter should also be visible from mid-month onwards low in the north-northeast. A waning crescent moon appears above Venus on the 21st, then directly above Jupiter the following morning. July's full buck moon occurs on the 10th, then the moon turning new on the 24th. Now, this event that I mentioned, which involves Saturn, isn't necessarily a once-in-a-lifetime event, but it does occur around every 36 years or so. Saturn will catch up to Neptune in the night sky, and although the pair have been within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view from March 21st, the gap between them will be less than a degree from June 27th to July 17th. They'll be closest on July 6th when just 58.4 arc seconds will separate the two, giving both visual observers and astrophotographers a unique opportunity to see these giant worlds together. The downside is that you'll need to be outside several hours before dawn. They'll come together again next February, but their low altitude at the time will make observations a bit more difficult. Now, speaking of planets, Neptune is the farthest planet in our solar system, and on all of our What's in the Night Sky episodes, we haven't heard much from the dwarf planet, Pluto. Let's talk a little bit about Pluto at opposition. If you are looking for a challenge and have the equipment to make it possible, you can try to spot Pluto, which is at opposition on the 24th. You'll need a large scope, You'll need dark skies and a detailed star chart or an app to identify it. So after that little solar system adventure, we're going to head out far into deep space. We're going to take a look at Messier 4, a globular cluster. Messier 4 is a neat little globular star cluster conveniently located between Antares and Al Niat in the constellation Scorpius. M4 shows some resolution with averted vision at around 40 times magnification. Doubling the magnification will reveal a prominent bar of stars intersecting the cluster's core. For those of you tuning in or just watching our episodes for the first time, I always mention that globular star clusters are absolutely spectacular to view through a telescope, specifically ones with large aperture and under dark skies. Almost nothing beats the sight of a globular cluster through an eyepiece if you have the right equipment under the right conditions. From Messier 4, we're going to travel to a nebula that is one of the brightest in the Northern Hemisphere. This is Messier 8, the Lagoon Nebula. The Lagoon Nebula is bright enough to be spotted with the naked eye, but you'll need to be under dark skies to see it. Otherwise, binoculars will pick it up and telescopes will provide a fine view and the nebula is simply stunning in photographs. With a larger telescope of about 8 to 10 inches in diameter and dark skies, one can start to see faint green and pink smudges within the nebula. Now from here, we're going to travel to one of the most iconic nebula in the night sky. This is Messier 16, the Eagle Nebula, which houses the famous Pillars of Creation. This is another favorite for astrophotographers. The star cluster within it is detectable with binoculars, but a telescope is needed to see the nebula itself, which is particularly apparent 
to the south of the cluster. For astrophotographers, there is an immense amount of hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur data surrounding this entire region. And for those astrophotographers who want to get up close and personal on the pillars of creation, a long focal length telescope is recommended to see some incredible detail within them. So that is our tour of the night sky for the month of July. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. If you've ever seen or photographed any of these targets, let us know as well. We'd love to hear from you. So with that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content like these What's in the Night Sky episodes and other product reviews on astronomy equipment. Again, my name is Tegan. Thank you so much and clear skies.